Welcome to our October field trip with the Aldo Leopold Audubon Society. I'm Karen Dostal and we're here at the Schmeekley Reserve uh, Visitor Center on the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point campus. The reserve is named after Sh Fred Schmeekley who came to Stevens Point in 1923 to teach at the Stevens Point Normal School which is now UWSP. He was appointed to teach agriculture but he saw the need for conservation focus. He is quoted as saying, the destruction of the forests, the pollution of waters, and the mid misuse of wildlife areas are factors that started me thinking something should be done to educate people about the wise use of resources. In the early 1930s, Schmeekley began teaching conservation courses, which developed into the largest conservation education major in the United States, the College of Natural Resources. Schmeekley took his classes on field trips in an area north of campus. In 1958, when speaking about the pur purchase of land north of campus, Schmeekley said, someday this area will be an island of green in the city of Stevens Point. 20 years later, when the reserve was created, Fred Schmeekley's vision was acknowledged as he became the namesake of this natural area. If you come and explore all of the reserve, you will find many interesting areas to explore from the Burrard Oaks to the Zimmerman Prairie. But today, I want to take you to an area near and dear to the Aldo Leopold Audubon Society, the bird viewing area. Due to COVID, the building is closed and the bird viewing area isn't accessible from inside, but we'll go around and we'll see if we can find some birders at uh, the birding area just around the corner. And here I find two young birders back in the birding area. What birds have you seen here this afternoon? We've seen a morning dove and two catfish. Oh. A red and black bird, chickadee, and a lot of nut hatches. Oh good. More chickadees. More chickadees? Yeah. And some more peckers. And which of these birds do you think you'll see here in Wisconsin all winter? The chickadee. <laughs> and have you seen Chicken? any birds that are migrating birds that you wouldn't find here in the winter? The red winged black. Mm -hmm. um, but everything's not happy. Everything's <laughs> oh, that's is not happy. Yeah. Okay. What is? Some of the morning doves do migrate, and some stay. Sure. Yeah. They move around to find food, don't they? It looks like there's quite a lot of bird activity here this afternoon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and I saw one frog. Back. Hello everyone and welcome to Schmeekly Reserve. My name is Jim Buchholz and I'm the director of the reserve. I've been here for the uh, past 20 years. I was a student at the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point for both my undergraduate and graduate degrees. And I love Schmeekly so much that I just decided to stay here. So uh, welcome, we're glad you're here with us today. Uh, Schmeekly Reserve is a 280 acre natural area that's part of the campus of UW Stevens Point. And there's a lot packed into that relatively small 280 acres. We have five miles of trails, we have a 24 acre lake, and a diversity of habitats from prairie to uh, sedge meadow, different kinds of wetlands, different kinds of forests, and they support uh, an array of different wildlife species. But one of my favorite places in Schmeekley Reserve is this place right here behind me. This is the bird viewing area, and it's been generously supported by the Aldo Leopold Audubon Society uh, for the past several years. Uh, the idea for the bird viewing area actually came up in 2018 we were looking for some ways to improve the visitor center experience for people that were walking through. 
and the Wisconsin Conservation Hall of Fame is one of our nonprofit partners. We have uh, several plaques up in a room that talk about uh, conservationists in Wisconsin history. But on the other side of those plaques are these big viewing windows, which you can see behind me. And one of the ideas was to create an area that would attract different wildlife, especially bird life, so people could get an up-close view of what those birds look like. And that was the idea for the bird viewing area. So my wife, Sunshine, actually was the primary coordinator of the project to begin with. Uh, we started to put out a few bird feeders that we had laying around. Uh, she created a really neat kids area inside where kids could uh, build with blocks and do different kinds of activities. And it kind of grew from there. But what we really needed were some funds to enhance this area and make it a true backyard natural habitat experience. Uh, this area used to be just kind of a weedy, grassy lawn area like you might have at any uh, old house. And the idea was to attract more wildlife, to attract more birds, we were going to make it into a native habitat and create this educational space where we could teach people not only about the birds and wildlife that are attracted to the area, but also about how you can create your own backyard habitat as well. And in order to do that, we needed funding. And so we went to the Elder Leopold Audubon Society and asked for a grant for some funding that would really create this space. And we were fortunate enough to be awarded a grant and that allowed us to do all sorts of neat things. Uh, come along, we'll see what some of those areas look like. So one of the main things you'll see when you come to the bird viewing area are a lot of different kinds of bird feeders. And that was one of the things we really wanted to do in order to attract the largest diversity of birds was to put up different feeders and put up different seed sources. So we have uh, large platform feeders, for example, and tube feeders. And uh, in the springtime and summer, we have hummingbird feeders out. We also have Baltimore Oriole feeders. We have suet. And we really see an incredible diversity of birds. Uh, this past spring, we had a lot of people that came to watch uh, numerous rose-breasted grosbeaks, the Baltimore Orioles. And all throughout the season, we have red-headed woodpeckers, which you don't see very often, but we have a really strong population of those in Schmeekley as well. We also have a heated bird bath, as you can see over here, which keeps water available all winter long. Uh, the seeds are generously donated by the uh, Elder Leopold Audubon Society every year as part of their bird feed sale. As you can imagine, with our uh, voracious appetite of birds and, yeah, even squirrels, we go through a lot of seed at Schmeekley. And all winter long, fall and spring and summer, we'll be filling up these feeders to make a really good viewing opportunity for people. So another neat feature that the Elder Leopold Audubon Society uh, funded for us was this water feature. We really wanted to attract other wildlife with the sound of moving water. And we worked with Emeritus Professor uh, Michael Gross. He was a professor of environmental interpretation, actually one of the founders of the Elder Leopold Audubon Society. And he's still very active in our Friends of Schmeekley Reserve and working on other kinds of uh, restoration projects. And so Mike had some expertise because he uh, built a pond in his own backyard and we uh, convinced him to help us to plan and create this water feature as well. So you can see there's a waterfall on one end. It kind of comes into a small pond that's a perfect place for smaller birds to be able to sit and bathe and drink water. And then we have a little stream that gurgles along until it fills up a much larger uh, pond area. That pond is actually three feet deep so it doesn't freeze all the way down in the winter which allows us to have, we don't have fish yet, but someday we might put fish in there. But this year we had a whole population of frogs and the kids love to come over and see the frogs and try to poke them with sticks and watch them uh, swim all over the place. We also have some native plants that we're planting here as well. And so the water feature is really a neat focal point for the whole bird viewing area. Not only is it beautiful, an aesthetic thing for people to see, but it also attracts a lot of wildlife in too. We even had a pair of mallards this year using the pond. Around the pond area, you'll also see some cages with some plants inside of them. This is our native shrub planting. So again, early on, this was a kind of a weedy backyard area, but we decided that with the help of a, a, a master gardener named Jill Zier, she's also a master naturalist, she helped us create a landscaping plan that would make this a beautiful native wildlife area. So all of the different shrubs and trees that you see planted have some benefit to wildlife, whether it's for shelter or whether they uh, grow berries that the, the animals can eat. So we've got winterberry, for example, which they're just finishing up right now, but they have these beautiful bright red berries. Uh, they don't last very long because the birds love to eat them. We have chokeberry that also produce different berries that are edible. We have red osier dogwood, which has a really nice cover and fills in different areas. 
And we also have a pagoda dogwood, a larger tree that's going to provide perches for birds in the future. And so why the fences? Because we have a lot of deer at Schmeekly as well. And if we didn't put the fences up, the deer would eat them like candy. And so the bird feeders that we saw just before, they're all high enough that a, a deer can't actually reach them. We don't want to feed the deer themselves and congregate the deer. But as the birds and the squirrels are eating their seeds, they do drop several on the ground. And so if you're here at the bird viewing area, you'll likely see deer uh, looking and scraping the ground to find some of those seeds that were left over. We have a flock of turkeys that likes to visit the area too. And at night, there's flying squirrels that come in. So a lot of different opportunities to see wildlife. One of the highlights of your visit to the Schmeekle Visitor Center is uh, looking at the bird viewing area from the windows itself. Now, during the COVID-19 pandemic, we unfortunately had to shut down the Visitor Center. It's been closed since March. We don't know when we're going to be able to open again, but uh, as we keep monitoring the cases, hopefully soon we'll be able to open our doors again to the visitors. And inside you'll find Amish made rocking chairs, so it's a really comfortable place to sit. We have uh, binoculars, both adult size and kid size, that were also donated uh, as part of the Elder Leopold Audubon Society grant that we received. So it gives you a nice close-up view of the birds that are flying around. You'll notice there's some feeders that are real close to the windows as well. So as you're looking at the birds, they're right there and you can see all the different details of the feather, the details of the eyes. It's a really neat place. Inside of that bird viewing area also are lots of kids activities. We actually have little blocks that our uh, student employees made that are in the shape of birds. You can try stacking them to see how high they go. Uh, we have workbooks and coloring pages. We have a stuffed animals that when you squeeze them, they actually make sounds like the different animals themselves. And so it's a real family friendly place to come to sit, to watch uh, the different birds and the different wildlife that you might see out the window. Thank you for joining us on this virtual field trip. Now it's up to you to get yourselves here. Bring a pair of binoculars, grab a field guide, and come and see some spectacular wildlife. Schmeekly Reserve, 2419 North Point Drive, Stevens Point, Wisconsin.